Hello, All-Star listeners, and welcome to another episode of the Veterinary Roundtable presented by All-Star Veterinary Clinic, the podcast where we answer your veterinary-related questions while having some fun along the way. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to leave us a review on your podcast provider of choice. And if you have any feedback to offer to improve the Veterinary Roundtable, let us know. Please. It's very important. Yes, absolutely. Let us know. On today's episode, we have myself, co-host and associate veterinarian, Dr. Ashlyn Duckwall, my veterinary technician, Courtney Vaughn, surgery technician, Stephanie Spat, and our head honcho, the head veterinarian of All-Star, and my co-host, Dr. Emily King. Welcome. Welcome. Hello. How's everybody doing today? Tired. Yeah. yeah. Good. <laughs> it's a little different because we're yeah. shooting in the middle of the day. Yeah. So Do you feel the... a little more like energetic, alive? I feel like no, we have not. more energy because we're slap happy at the end of the day. Yeah. Okay, I get that point. Although I'm feeling like the lunchtime. Oh no, we're still going to talk decline. about food because yeah. it's like lunch. I'm still hungry. I'm hungry. Everyone's still hungry. I haven't yeah. eaten lunch yet, so I'm still hungry. Okay. Yeah. So I had a snack. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Snacks are great. <laughs> Snacks are the best. Okay, so we're doing something new. We're doing a little section called best news. So we go around and share best news within the last like week or last time we did a podcast. So a couple weeks, I guess. Gosh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Time flies by when you're having fun. I think Courtney should go first. Okay, Courtney. She's got great yeah, news. Yeah, she's got great news. I got a puppy. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Jacob and I adopted a little 11-week-old pit bull mix. We don't know what his dad was, so he's a mystery puppy. We have no idea what he's going to look like when he grows up, but he's fantastic. His name is Miles Quinn Allen. He's fluffy. Yeah, he's, he's a fluffy cute. pity. <laughs> yeah, he's blue and white. His eyes are so cute. Oh, and he's got blue eyes. Yeah, I One love his eyes. A little patch of gray. Yeah, he's a good boy. Obviously, he'll be on our social media. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yes, he'll be out there. Yes, he was a star yesterday. Yep, yeah, he's gonna be a TikTok Star's star. born. Mm-hmm. He's gonna be a TikTok <laughs> star. Yep, exactly. Yeah, he's a good boy. I like it. That's great news. Yeah. It's always great. It's mm-hmm. great. I have puppies around. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, most of the time. Mm, most of the time, yeah. you're right. The training's not so fun. <laughs> yeah, he chewed through our internet cord already and my phone charger. But the internet core was an accident. He was chewing on his chew, and I think the cord got in his mouth by accident because he was next to the couch and chewed right through it. And then I put him in bed yesterday with Jacob, and Jacob fell back asleep, and he chewed my phone cord in half. So that was dad's fault. That is, yes. Dad got in trouble, not puppy. (laughs) (laughs) Puppies are innocent always. Oh, gosh. They're only as good as the people, right? uh That's right. That's for sure. It's a hard lesson to learn. Mm -hmm. What about you, Stephanie? Uh, well, this past weekend, um, I was in Ohio, uh, but I got to, I guess, reunite with my um, my stepmother, who I haven't seen since last year at my wedding. Okay. Um, so she had traveled up from North Carolina, so I got to see her. Um, so it's a very rare occurrence that I get to, I guess, meet up with my family because they're all in North Carolina or California. And so... Um, so that was really nice to yeah. catch up with her. Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. Family time's the best. And the weather was probably really nice. It was a good weekend, wasn't oh, yeah. it? You like to have everybody. That's really cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, good. That's very exciting. What about you? You know, I had a really hard time coming up with best news. Not because there isn't any best news. <laughs> there's always best news, right? Um, so, um, well, one of the best news is totally because we didn't mention earlier how all the followers that we've been gaining so that's yeah, like really exciting best news yeah that's good news you know so we yeah. got to thank all those guys for that but then also it's got to be about food always <laughs> so cool. i pulled out the old recipe the pumpkin chocolate chip cookie recipe oh it's legit it's hmm. really good. Mm, I'm not a pumpkin so person, good. but I would try that. Oh, they're so good. And then um, I made them on Sunday and they disappear really quickly. Yeah. Are you going to bring some in? Um, well, Harrison, <laughs> do you still have any of yours left? Nope. He ate them. <laughs> <laughs> I sent him with a baggie home and I had to freeze some. And yesterday, so I froze a baggie because I'm like, they will eat them all. Yes. Mm-hmm. Maybe I can make them forget about them Ooh. if I put them away in the freezer and then they'll forget them because <laughs> uh-huh. I always make two batches because they go very fast. Uh-huh. And so I was like, I'll freeze this batch and then they'll forget and then I can pull them out next weekend or whatever. So I put the batch in the freezer. Uh-oh. They I, Last night I get home from work. They're all coming in from their activities. And they're like, where are the pumpkin chocolate chip cookies? I'm like, <laughs> in the freezer. <laughs> sure. She said they're gone. They and they're gone. Sniff them out. <laughs> yep, they sniff them out. So they're gone. I will oh. bring some. You because they're not a hard recipe. I'll hold I you mean, to that. Now, somebody at, where was it? Somebody was talking about the easy recipe for pumpkin chocolate chip cookies. Was that with you, Harrison? What's the hard recipe? No, when, a dinner on Sunday? an easy one. I don't know what it they're, is, They though. talk about using like the spice cake recipe. Oh. 
who was it? Allie Cook. It was in the leadership meeting. That's right. Um, Because I I also feel he was talking about these, I guess, on Monday, too. Um, So there was a spice cake that mix, and you just add pumpkin to it. Isn't that what she was saying? Maybe, like, you make up the cake mix, as it says on the box, but then you just add a can of pumpkin. Yeah. And she's like, Hmm. easy pleasy. I have not done that. So do not do that. I do not know if that's a true recipe. I feel like it sounds like it would work. But my recipe is like 10 ingredients. So it's not hard to make because you just throw it all together. But yeah. It's like, you know, a lot of different things. Can't but I'll wait bring to try them. them. They're good. Yeah, I'm very excited. Okay. I'm bringing them. <laughs> Hold you for to sure. it. Okay. Um, my ball. best news is for my dad. He retired uh, <gasps> last week. Oh, that's so exciting. He sold his business, his golf business. And that's the only job he's ever had for 47 wow. years. Yeah. He started there when he was 14, worked his way up, bought that's it in awesome. 1991. Driving the same path to work for 47 years. So... Um, similar to all star, he had no, got approached and it was a good, just set up. And so now he's officially a retired man. Good for that's him. Awesome. Yeah. That's so awesome. we're excited. Awesome. It's kind of, it's weird. Cause he, that's all he knew even before meeting my mom. And that's yeah. where, how, where we grew up and all that stuff kind of, but, um, no, just sitting at home totally in the slums. <laughs> no, he's I definitely just... not. That's yeah. He'll be very active. Yeah. He wants to give back to the community. He said, and, um, spend more time with us. So that's, nice. that's cool. Yeah. Really Proud cool. of him. Very cool. Very yeah. exciting time. Okay. Are we on to case collections? Yeah, we're on to it. On to it. Okay. We know the drill. Courtney, <laughs> case collection. Do you have one? Yeah, I do. Okay. If I didn't or if I don't want to share, do I have to? <laughs> <laughs> She's yes. out. Get her off this podcast. <laughs> Remove her. We need like a button, a lever. I know. They either go up or down. One of the two. <laughs> Um, so Dr. Duckwell and I actually had a, um, staffy, so like a pit bull, um, come in two weeks ago, I believe, um, for a potential like paw infection, like skin infection. So she is a known dog to have skin problems. She has allergies. So she's on allergy medication, stuff like that. Um, so her paws were just a little bit inflamed. Um, so we just put her on an antibiotic and a steroid, um, thinking that would take care of everything. And then I checked in on her, um, and she still, they weren't improving as well as they should have. Um, so then we put her on a topical ointment, um, and gave dad a cone. So an e-collar, so she couldn't look at her paws and worsen them. Um, so dad was doing that for a little, a couple days. Um, and then he had reached back out and sent us pictures and the paws actually looked a lot worse. And she got to the point where every time dad would try to put the ointment on, he would bite her. Um, because she was so painful, which is very unlike her. She loves her dad. I mean, she's a sweet girl. Um, she loves her dad. So she was biting him um, and she started limping really bad on her front paws. Um, so we had her come back in and we sedated her this time because she is, she's a really good dog. She just doesn't like a whole lot of restraint and really holding her paws and stuff like that. So we fully sedated her with injectable sedation um, and looked at her paws further. And we actually found, well, dad had mentioned she had these kind of weird growths um, that he noticed. So we took a look at them um, and they ended up being papillomavirus. Um, So she was just a really, really severe case. Um, So papillomavirus is easily transmittable to other dogs. A lot of dogs get it from like boarding situations, stuff like that. Um, And usually the main places the gross grow is their paws and their mouth most of the time. And they kind of just look like almost like skin tags or horns. Um, so she had them all over her paws. Um, so we took a biopsy just to ensure that that's what it was. Um, and then what you do is you crush them with hemostats. And typically that takes care of them. You just make them really angry. And then there's an Im- immune response. Um, and they usually go away, but they can reoccur. They can come back. Um, and then we put her on an, a couple other medications. Um, and she seems to be doing a little bit better. So dad mm-hmm. said that she's not as painful. He's able to put the new cream on her paws. Um, so yeah, she's doing a little bit better, I guess. And so we'll just see with time. Make sure they go away all the way. Awesome. Yeah. It was a pretty severe case. I, yeah. they Sometimes dogs will get them like a couple, you know, or like I guess on the mouth, even if there's mm-hmm. a lot, it doesn't bother them as much. But hers were right on pressure points where she mm-hmm. was walking. Oh. And so it was just yeah, and her, their, her uncomfortable. Her paws were swollen. And, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. I think the rule of thumb is 12 weeks, right? I mean, they say, I think, 12 weeks for remission. They'll go into remission mm-hmm. in 12 weeks. Mm-hmm. But I think they're contagious until... Yeah. Right. And that's where, yeah. like, because you can surgically remove them, but you still run the risk of seeding or leaving things behind. Mm-hmm. And so at that time, they were just in bad spots where we just, I crushed as 
hard as I could to get remo- mm-hmm. remove them and then took her off the pred because obviously oh, yeah. that wasn't helping yeah, that's too with point, her immune yeah. system. So the steroid. Yeah. Yeah. Poor yep. girl. She's Look away. a little bit better. Mm-hmm. She's great. She'll be back next week to recheck them. So yeah. Doggy we'll daycares because they're all drinking the same water, mm-hmm. you know, so it's very they, yeah, <laughs> contain it, toys. It gets on toys yeah. and everything else. Mm-hmm. So it's very, very common. It's like a wildfire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but manageable. <laughs> yeah. Manageable. Thankfully, it just goes away. You don't yeah. have to, you know, I mean, but some of them can be really bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Stephanie, what about you? I had a really hard time um, kind of, I guess, thinking of, of something specific um, or something like interesting, um, I guess, like in surgery land. Um, I mean, we've, I feel like we've been doing a lot of foreign bodies lately. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I agree. <laughs> um, and I mean, we've, you know, stayed past after hours to to do a foreign body, you know, dogs that aren't doing well, um, which all those dogs now are doing great. So um, that ended you know, really well. Um, but the only, I guess the one thing that stuck out for me was, um, a cat that we had seen recently. Um, we hadn't seen the cat before for an exam. Um, but the owner was talking about how he was drooling a lot and he was having trouble eating his hard food. So he was only eating the, the wet food. Um, and just the drooling was just like super excessive. So she was like, that's really abnormal. Um, so he comes in and we're all, you know, planning to do like a normal dental cleaning um if there's going to be extractions and things like that um the doctor or the cat won't really let um the doctor really look in his mouth at all so it's hard to really tell so we did end up going through with um anesthetizing the cat um so we had you know the IV catheter everything set up and then um you know as soon as uh, we go to to intubate the cat um you can see just this huge um oral mass under the mm-hmm. tongue um, which, you know, is kind of, it's kind of a, what's the word? A little bit heartbreaking. Um, it's not what we expected at all. Um, but we wouldn't have even seen it without, I think you know, the cat being sedated at all, just cause mm-hmm. he was so, um, painful. Um, and it was just kind of bleeding and definitely like I could even tell just like trying to pull on his tongue a little bit to intubate, like it was so just like solid there. Mm-hmm. Um, but the doctor was able to uh, remove basically like almost all of it. Um, couldn't fully remove everything in clean margins just because of the location. Um, but the cat is um, on medication now, uh, and the I believe the mass did come back as a squamous cell, mm-hmm. um, which you know is unfortunate. Um, but the cat is doing better, and he's comfortable. He's eating really well, um, and so. You know, I think at this point it's just about keeping him comfortable and um, just doing everything for him. But I mean, it did, you know, it did help him in the long run because otherwise, if we wouldn't have done anything or tried anything, he would have just been very mm-hmm. uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I think the drooling was coming from his inability or unwillingness to move his tongue mm-hmm. to swallow the mm-hmm. drool. So then it was yeah. pooling and then obviously falling out of his mouth. Mm-hmm. So, because he wasn't just swallowing yeah. and moving his tongue to the back of. The spit to the back of his tongue to swallow. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that was. Those are always hard cases because you can't in that location at the base of the tongue. Mm-hmm. You can't remove it. Yeah, that's yeah, tough. That's crappy mm-hmm. location. Yeah, for sure. At least we were able to find it. And yeah, diagnose them. I think yeah. that really helps. I mean, yeah, so at least you know answer. what's going on. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, with the pet, mm-hmm. for sure. Poor kitty. Um, my case is a, um, German short hair pointer that is two years old that, um, presented for a swelling on the side of her, um, thorax kind of, I guess, caudal mid thorax. Um, and, um, this is a hunting dog that goes to Michigan and, um, previously, um, in the year had been hunting in Michigan and had come across a dead porcupine. And swallowed the porcupine, (laughs) chewed on it and swallowed quills of the porcupine. So if anybody out there knows when that happens, when dogs are exposed to porcupines, they're the spines themselves, you know, they shoot those out Mm -hmm. and then they get stuck. Usually it's in their face because they're sniffing the porcupine. Mm -hmm. Well, this was a dead porcupine. So the dog swallowed them. So they were... um, then the problem with the spines is that they migrate through the dog's body. So this particular dog, the first event, um, we uh, ended up, the dog had 
via ultrasound we could find the porky the the pine oh my god the i can't quills, talk like quills, the quills spines. yeah <laughs> spines yeah um and so we did um an exploratory and there was one in the stomach and then there was one um on the side of the chest wall and the dog came back now seven months six months seven months eight months later do you remember how long it's been i can't I feel like six months, six months and another one had migrated out oh my god. yeah <laughs> Wow. And so through the chest wall or through the abdominal wall was causing an abscess in a similar location to the other one. Hmm. So we don't know if there was like a group of them that were migrating through or if we didn't get all of the first one, but it had a granuloma like about that big, about oh, wow. two and a half inches big on its side that we basically dissected and removed. Oh. Um, but that will happen with those quills. They just migrate over time. And there are stories of dogs, unfortunately, dying suddenly because it migrates, yeah. you know, through their chest or through a major vessel or it's really wild. weird. Yeah. So do you do like CT to find like make sure you got them if the owner wanted to pursue that? Or? I think that you can. I think you can do a CT to find them, yeah. um, whether or not you surgically go get them. Right. Like what we found was that we found one in the momentum. This was last time we went in. One in the momentum, one in the stomach wall. Um and the mental one was walled, like that was pretty easy to get out. The stomach wall one was like, it and obviously because the dog ate it, had just migrating out through the stomach wall. Yeah. So it was like in the middle of the muscular layer of the stomach wall. It was really hard to dissect out. Yeah, I bet. Like, I mean, it was like a fibrous band knot. You're like, am I dissecting out quill? Am I dissecting out just fibrous tissue? Yeah. Like what is going on? Um, and so same thing happened with the one I took out yesterday is that it, it went, the granuloma communicated all the way down to that area of the rib where it kind of curls around and goes into the abdomen, mm -hmm. you know, where it's communicating with the abdomen and it's like it dead ended there, you know, and it's yeah. like, well, okay. I mean, I have nowhere else. Mm -hmm. I have nothing else I can remove. Yeah. So Wow. You said you did get the quill out. Fingers yesterday? crossed. We sent it in the the tissue for a histopath oh, to see okay, if they could find it. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, when I did an ultrasound over the area, I could not. It wasn't as nice of a view because you're supposed to have two hyperchoic lines with a hypochoic middle um, on the ultrasound, and I could not find that in this granuloma that showed up. I could see this very bright white um, density that was then shadowing, but it wasn't large enough that I can make it into like a linear yeah. object. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Hmm. What do you think Darn that feels quills. like eating that? I mean, that cannot be no, good, right? Like you say dogs are smart and then they eat stuff like that. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> I mean, you go online, you can see some of these pictures. I mean, it's at That's wild. hundreds of quills, mm -hmm. like all oh, in yeah, their I've, mouth and yeah. on their faces. And mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Poor thing. Yeah. Especially so if you live in the areas with those. Yeah, so you can actually, the hunting dogs can actually be trained to avoid them. So you can actually teach mm. them aversion training or use sense. aversion training. So you can do that with porcupines and snakes so they don't get themselves yeah. in trouble. Can't even imagine porcupine quills, how much yeah. those hurt. Because yeah, I had Sheldon, hurt. the hedgehog, and his quills, when I stepped on those, oh, yeah. they're awful. Yeah. And he didn't shoot his, he just shed them. But still, yeah. oh my gosh. Yeah, sharp. Yeah, oh they hurt. Well, uh, you'll have to keep us posted. I want the yeah. histopath. It's mm -hmm. a very, very interesting case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mine is um, disappointing, sad, but um, so it's a six and a half year old golden golden retriever, new client to us, second opinion um, for skin issues. And the previous vet did a wonderful job at working the skin up. So basically doing all the necessary things and things you have to check off. So testing for ringworm, looking for skin infection, bacterial um looking for mites, all of these things, like some infection was present, but no mites, no ringworm. Um, and then also this time of year, allergies, you know, treating for allergies mm -hmm. as a flare up. And so knowing all this history, it's kind of like, well, we just have to look at the dog and see what we're dealing with. The first thing I noticed is that this is a purebred golden retriever and he was speckled white, like a, um, Irish setter almost, mm -hmm. but his, so the speckles were white and the rest was the golden fur color. And I, of his fur, his, of fur, his fur, was speck oh, his fur, fascinating. So mm -hmm. I asked, I was like, is this normal for him? And she's like, well, it started to change about a year ago. And I said, okay, that's interesting. So then I saw some spots that had been shaved and it looked like they were probably healing hot spot type lesions. But as I ran my finger through the fur, unfortunately they were just, his skin was, just covered, diffusely covered with red spots, bumps, um, 
scaly areas. I mean, all over his body. There was no pattern where I would be like, oh, this is that. And then it was interesting because he has ripped two toenails off in the last like three weeks. I'm like, Mm -hmm. that. On That's a abnormal. Claw, yeah. On a dew claw. Yeah. I'm like, wow, what is he doing? Is he getting it caught? And she's like, well, he was running around, but it completely tore off. And then I went to his mouth and on his gum tissue area, there started to be some hypopigmentation. So it went from black to pink and then some bump areas. And she said that was new. So all of these things are screaming to me, it's an autoimmune disease or it's unfortunately cancer, which is what we can see. So she, we did biopsies that day, sent them to Texas and just got the report back that it was um, consistent with epithelial trophic T-cell lymphoma. So very aggressive type of skin cancer that prognosis is guarded. Um, The dog's become miserable because they just are so either itchy, they're licking everywhere. You know, they get secondary infections, which is what's the itchy part and because they have no protection. Um, But there is treatment. You can refer to an oncologist for chemotherapy. They do protocols. The therapy requires very strict monitoring because it can harm their liver. It's processed by the liver. The other option is palliative care with prednisone, which sometimes keeps them comfortable, whether it's the itchiness, their appetite, things like that. Um, or we just keep them comfortable with topical supportive care, essentially. So it was um, obviously unexpected new news. And so they're still thinking about their next approaches. Um, unfortunately, I've had a case like this when I first started and she did well on the prednisone for a while, but yeah, it does they're tough come, cases. Mm-hmm. They are because there's, it's they're really just miserable. Like, mis- yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. The survival time is on average six months. Yeah. If that, so. It's really sad to see, especially because he's so young and he's such a sweet boy. Yeah. Darn His mom's awesome. Yeah. Know. It's just one of those diseases where like, ah, oh, crap. I know. <laughs> I don't want to have this conversation. I don't want to deliver this news. Yeah. I don't want this for this dog. But it's always hard too when it's new clients because. Mm-hmm you're telling them something catastrophic, you know, or, Mm -hmm. you know, and so it's like, you haven't had a chance to get to know them and build up all Mm -hmm. that trust, you know, and it's just so hard to deliver that news. Right. You know, she was really nice. I think those people are so appreciative though, of getting again, like what we talked Mm -hmm. about earlier, getting the answer, right? Like, okay, well now I know an answer. Now I can wrap my brain around what the next steps are, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Exactly. Instead of questioning. Gosh. Yeah. They've been dealing with it for a while. Yeah. So, Bummer. Bummer. Yeah. Biopsies help with biopsies, skin. Biopsies, biopsy, biopsy. Yeah. But also you had mentioned you send them to Texas, which is, you know, another important thing for people to yeah. I think keep in mind is send them to Texas. Yes. Mm-hmm. The specific skin derm path. Skin, mm-hmm. yes, people. goes to Texas. <laughs> That's yes. all they look at. <laughs> it makes it really does make a big difference it does. in terms yeah. of diagnosing them and then which I think then goes a lot to if you're gonna take the time to biopsy them. Mm-hmm. Send them to Texas. It's not any more expensive than sending them to your outside reference laboratory. Yep. You can mm-hmm. work with the lab. Like we've got a whole little thing set up now where mm-hmm. you basically, we've, you know, got a little process in place. Yep. And yeah. so I don't feel like, do you feel like as technicians, that it's hard to do, to, you know, even though well, you're not no. using an, the same lab that no. you use every single day. The hardest thing is packaging. And once you do it once or twice, you're fine. Yeah. It's not bad at all. And you can send pictures. I sent pictures mm-hmm. with this yeah. case, and mm-hmm. they're appreciative how that lines up too. Yeah. So, and that's their all commu- they their do. Their communication skin, is pretty yeah. good too. Texas's lab, they're yeah. really good about that kind of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, yeah that's our pearl Go of wisdom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> send them to Texas. Send them to Texas, baby. <laughs> all right, listener question. Here we go. It's a really good one. Could you do one on USMI? We'll explain that in young and neutered males. Have a former guide dog pup with a diagnosis of USMI, and there's little info out there. Haley Worthington. It's a great question. Good question. Yes. Thanks for the question. Thanks for the question. So what does USMI stand for, ladies? Urethral. Uh Uh-huh. U.S. I don't know. I looked it up. I don't remember. I forgot already. (laughs) Sphincter. Sphincter. (laughs) Yes. Something incontinence. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Mechanism <laughs> incontinence. Yes. Nice. It sounds like a university. USMI. Uh-huh. Yeah. Welcome to right. USMI. 
Yeah. The peepees of. I was, <laughs> was going to come up with a mascot name. Okay. When the peepees don't. Peepee whippings. Okay. That's the joke for old. Never mind. It's an inside family joke. Okay. Um, so do you want to talk a little bit about what it is? Because, I right. mean, there's incontinence, like the group. So I think it's important for people to know, like, incontinence is like this thing, this umbrella. Mm -hmm. And then there's these things underneath it yes. that cause. Okay, so. So for USMI specifically, it has to do with essentially the um, hormone. Well, in males, it's different yeah. because it we'll kind of get into that. It can deal with their anatomy and everything too. But in general, it deals with their muscle tone, their muscle strength, but also the hormones involved in that. We'll put it that way. Yeah. There's also neurologic nerves that go with that. But mm -hmm. to simplify it, there's their system is not – Tying together. It's not communicating. It's not communicating. Yeah. So then it's therefore the you page. get some leakage. <laughs> yes. So that's the gist of this. Now, looking specifically at males, because it is rare. So Haley, it's rare. a great question because mm -hmm. it's very, yeah. very rare in males. There's actually poor, it's poorly understood. Little research is present. Mm -hmm. But in males, um, it's more finite because it, ha it can deal with their, their prostate the location of the prostate. It can deal with their bladder and where the bladder is in their abdomen or in their pelvic region. It can deal with neutering and the hormones that go with that process. Um, so there's a lot that goes with it. Where in females, it's a little bit more straightforward. They've been spayed. They're, they don't have enough estrogen, which ties into this mechanism. Um, sometimes we have to supply it for them for that strength mm -hmm. of the system. So Yes. Yes. So the U, I can never, because this is not what I call it, USMI, aka estrogen responsive incontinence is kind of like another trade name yes. or what you'll hear out there because it is a, a disease prim primarily found in spade females. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll put a link that has information. Um, I found a good link from a board certified internist about, about this particular situation. But this is a diagnosis kind of a rule out, mm -hmm. right? So Absolutely. you've ruled out all these other causes for incontinence because mm -hmm. if you look how at how that how the urinary tract system works, you can either have a bladder that's really full that spills over, mm -hmm. right? Or the sphincter that just allows things to leak out. So mm -hmm. I think and then there can be reasons why those things happen. So then what you try and do is eliminate all the other th causes for the incontinence. And then you're left with. Because abdominal pressure is a part of it too. Mm -hmm. So is it after they're eating right. and there's increased pressure? I mean, there's so many, there's so many aspects to it that even like kind of refreshing on it, it's hard to keep, keep it all track of. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, it is. There's like, you know, they, they do have a list of questions that you kind of go through to help determine one if you can locate where the problem might be you know so like what you're mentioning like okay if the dog goes out and goes to the bathroom and they come back in or is their bladder empty because they should mm -hmm. only have a certain amount of urine left over um when they're done urinating and mm -hmm. so is their bladder easily expressed or is it not what does their urine stream look like i mean there's like all these questions that we can go through yeah. to try and help narrow down you know the Imaging the reason helps. Yeah. So you can literally see where the bladder's at. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I think for Haley, making sure that one, that you had a, a complete workup done on the dog. Yes. But then if so, if they've eliminated all these differentials and you're left with this condition, which is unusual in a neutered male, but still occurs per research, mm -hmm. um, then I think medication is yeah. <laughs> their only choice. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. mean, th you know, they go through like when we were doing research on this particular topic for this episode. Um, some people are now talking about like injections, mm -hmm. you know, which mm. I don't think anybody's really that hip on yet because they haven't seen. Right. Um, There's surgery options. Surgery. That, but it all depends on like I can't even name one in particular because it depends on the anatomy of the dog right. too and things like that. So typically the first go to is going to be your medication. So pro in is yeah. something we use a lot in females. So that's, you can use it in males. Yeah. So. And then I think they talked about testosterone mm -hmm. in males. Um, Which is also kind of. I know. 
<laughs> debated. Yeah, debated, <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. And then um, acupuncture, which I don't mm. know if I saw anything in there on acupuncture or not. I think I read that that's Did you, an option. Yeah, but. I've had a lot of luck with acupuncture, even in, in females, mm. if, the, if it's attempted early. Mm. Like, so like, say the pet just shows up with incontinence and... Um, it's not been going on for years or something like that. And they pursue acupuncture. We've actually been able to get control over the incontinence huh. hmm. with that's acupuncture. Cool. Yeah. So that's, that's another good. thought to yeah, keep in mind really cool. too. And it's, I mean, I guess to Haley too, like ruling out all the other stuff, it can get pretty extensive. Oh and yes. Financially involving because you have to go through all of the steps to make sure you're not missing anything mm-hmm. and fall back on this rare disease. Um, so we were talking earlier, what are some things that you want to rule out in general, male or female, I guess, but male urinary that you tract would... infection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. UTI. A mass in the bladder. Yep. 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 What are other things that can form in the urinary tract? Stones. stones. <laughs> yep. <laughs> bladder yep, stones. stones. Yep. What if it's an intact male? Could the prostate have to do with like, mm-hmm. pushing on it or if it's... Yeah. Enlarged. Yeah. Yeah. Enlarged. Just Enlarged prostate, prostate, disease. prostate, mm-hmm. prostate yeah. infection. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Darn prostates. <laughs> just in the way. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's pretty much. And then what you were, well, I guess it would go a little bit with this, but can they even empty their bladder completely? Right. Like that's a simple mm-hmm. thing we can look at. Because there's. Because I think in male dogs, they can have that situation where the two mechanisms aren't communicating at the at the right time so like the urethra relaxing mm-hmm. and the bladder contracting and then the sphincter relaxing like it doesn't all work at the same time yeah. so then they're not able to void their bladder completely so then you get that spillover right. mm-hmm. incontinence and so it can look like they're just dribbling urine and they're incontinent but they didn't ever empty their bladder it's not mm-hmm. like they yeah you know so it's fascinating it's fascinating. Well, like you said even like the anatomy like we had that one dog with the prepuce hole that was like itty bitty so like an exam yeah <laughs> it's helpful yeah. too in that situation yep yeah he had an itty bitty hole itty yeah, bitty teeny, but then teeny, we opened, teeny, opened tiny. it <laughs> it was very small it was yes. like almost not there <laughs> yeah but we made it bigger for him yeah. so he could pee better <laughs> yeah that was that was fun i, I forgot remember. about that was that. Cool. that was really yeah. cool yeah that picture I, just popped up on my memories did it? Mm-hmm. Good picture. <laughs> yeah, that was a good case. Yeah, it was. Make a I difference will, though. and I always like to remind owners too. Like I watched this CE video conference about incontinence. It was in females. It focused, but still, the principal came down to at the very end. They go through all this testing for this dog that was having this issue at night, peeing on the bed, and simply the internist was like, "Okay, put up a video camera and just see what she does at night because mm-hmm. she's not waking you up." The dog just stood up, knew it had to pee, peed on its bed, and then went and just, just laid a in a different spot. So truly, like, that's another thing where I'm like, yeah. okay, see what your animal's doing. Like, either don't set up a camera if you want or something, but just, like, see what it's doing in those hours where you're not with it. Mm-hmm. Because it could be as simple as, as it that. Exactly. It just didn't want to. Oh, yes. yep. It was just finding a spot on its bed. and then, being naughty. Like, it mm-hmm. recognized it had to pee. It squat and peed a full amount. Right. Which I guess going back to the very beginning, we didn't really mention the difference between like defining what is incontinence. You know what I mean? Because we hear that all the time. Right. And you guys do too in exam rooms. My dog's having accidents and immediately you go to like in our brains, we're going to the dog purposely voiding. Yes. You know, versus they're just finding wet spots. Yeah. And like you can't, unless you can like, unless you visually see what's yeah. happening with mm-hmm. the dog and it actually purposely voiding you can't say which one it is right yeah yeah to your point of the video camera yeah like, like doesn't know what's happening yeah especially if, the, if if an owner came in and the history was i'm finding wet spots where it's sleeping at night mm-hmm. i mean we're all gonna think incontinence yeah, yeah. you it know because it's the day, so incontinence yeah. is defined yeah. as just leaking urine not knowing that you're mm-hmm. doing it yep. not aware yeah so yeah fascinating yeah very That's interesting yeah there's a lot to unpack there. Unpack there. <laughs> a lot of diagnostics. A lot of diagnostics, but good for you for Haley for yes. checking into yeah. it. And asking the question. Mm-hmm. And like I said, we'll put that link on there. That'll give you more information as well. So, okay. 
All right. Well, gosh, for our midday wow. podcast, we made it through. Time to eat some lunch. Time to eat yeah, some lunch. Like, so. <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> I was all right. thinking about food. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Veterinary Roundtable. Remember, send in those questions and be sure to follow us on all social media platforms at All Star Veterinary Clinic. <laughs> I saw like that. That. I saw that. We're all hungry. <laughs> if you enjoyed this episode or a previous episode, leave us a review on your podcast provider of choice. We'll see you in a few weeks for the next episode of the Veterinary Roundtable. Woo! Yay.